In this video, the topic of electrostatics will be discussed. First, static electric charges will be explored, including the movement of charge and electrostatic forces. Charging objects through friction, contact, and induction will also be discussed. Secondly, Coulomb's law will be discussed, and the effect on Coulomb's constant K by other mediums will be explained. Finally, the Millikan oil drop experiment will be explained, and the discovery of the magnitude of the elementary charge explored. At the subatomic level, electric charge is carried by two particles, protons and electrons. Both particles carry 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs of charge. This amount of charge is known as the elementary charge E. Proton carries a charge of plus E and the electron minus E. Protons are bound in the nucleus and are not free to move generally, but the electrons can escape the atom easily and are able to transfer between objects in space. It is the gain or loss of electrons that will cause an object to become charged. Materials that allow charges to move easily through them are called conductors, and materials that strongly resist the flow of charge through them are called insulators. An object with an imbalance of positive and negative charges is referred to as electrically charged. A neutral object contains an equal number of protons and electrons. A negatively charged object has more electrons than protons and a positively charged object has lost electrons and so has fewer electrons than protons. Charges can exert electrostatic forces on other charges, with like charges, the charges with the same sign of charge, repelling each other, and opposite charges attracting each other. A neutral object can experience an attractive electrostatic force to either a positive or a negatively charged object. This is caused by a charge separation. The positive and negative charges in a neutral object are separated on the neutral object because of the electrostatic forces causing the electrons to move. The protons cannot move due to their location in the nucleus. This charge separation causes the neutral object to behave as if it is charged. There is always a net attractive force because the repulsive force between the two objects acts over a larger distance than the attractive force. Electric charge must be conserved. If charge is transferred from one object to another, the two objects will have an equal electric charge but opposite signs. When charge conductors come in contact with each other, charge will transfer until an equilibrium is reached. If a charge conductor is connected to the earth, charge will flow to or from the earth. The earth provides an infinitely large reservoir that can accept excess charge from the object or provide electrons to the object. The three ways in which charge can be transferred to create an electrically charged object are friction, contact, and induction. Through friction, rubbing two insulators made of different materials against each other will transfer electrons from one object to the other, creating a positive and a negatively charged object. Through contact, if a charged conducting object is put in contact with a neutral object, electrons will transfer from one object to the other. When the contact is broken, the uncharged object will now be electrically charged with the same sign as the charged object. Through induction, if a charged object is brought close to an uncharged object, the charged object will exert an electrostatic force on the electrons in the neutral object, causing them to move and create a charge separation. If there's a path from the neutral object to the ground, electrons will have the ability to move on or off the neutral object causing it to be electrostatically charged. The object remains charged once the connection to the ground is broken. The charged object can then be removed. Objects charged by induction will have the opposite electrostatic charge from the object that caused the charge transfer. The electrostatic force acting between two charged point sources can be explored using Coulomb's law. Often we will be dealing with charged objects that are spherical in shape. These objects behave the same as if all their charge were concentrated at the center of the sphere. This allows us to treat the object as point charges of theoretically zero size. The electrostatic force between two point charges is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the charges, and directly proportional to the product of the magnitude of the charges on the objects. The relationship for the electrostatic force acting on a point charge due to another point charge is given by the formula electrostatic force is equal to Coulomb's constant K 
times the magnitude of charge 1 times the magnitude of charge 2 divided by the distance between the charges squared. This is known as Coulomb's Law. Coulomb's constant K in vacuum is 8.99 times 10 to the 9 Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared, but will change if the charges are in a different medium. Coulomb's constant is defined through the equation K is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon, where epsilon is the permittivity of the medium. The permittivity is a physical constant for a substance and is related to its ability to allow electric fields to pass through the material. The permittivity of free space for vacuum is essentially equal to that of air and is equal to 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared per newton meter squared. If the point charges are in a different medium, coulomb's constant for that medium must be calculated using the permittivity for that medium. For example, the permittivity of water is 7.8 times 10 to the negative 10 coulomb squared per newton meter squared. So in water, coulomb's constant K would be a smaller value. The Millikan oil drop experiment, performed by Robert Millikan and Harry Fletcher in 1909, is credited in determining experimentally the value for the elementary charge. In the experiment, oil droplets are first charged electrically by falling through ionized air. Then the terminal velocity of the oil droplet is measured. Terminal velocity occurs when the oil droplet's downward force of gravity is equal to the upwards drag and buoyancy forces. The drag force is equal to 6 pi times the viscosity of the air times the radius of the oil droplet times the terminal velocity of the oil droplet. And the buoyancy force is equal to the density of the air times the volume of the oil droplet times the gravitational field strength g. The buoyancy force is very small in comparison to the force of gravity on the oil droplet. By equating these forces, the force of gravity acting on the oil droplet can be found. The droplet's fall is then halted by an upward electrostatic force applied through an electric field on the charged droplet. The upward electrostatic force plus the upward buoyancy force will be equal to the force of gravity acting on the droplet. The electric force acting on the oil droplet is equal to the electric field strength due to the parallel plates times the magnitude of the charge on the oil droplet. And the electric field strength due to parallel plates is equal to the potential difference between the plates divided by the plate separation. Through this equilibrium of forces, the charges on the drops could be determined. It was seen that all droplet charges were a multiple of a single value, which was the value of the elementary charge. In summary, the elementary charge E has a magnitude of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs and is the charge on the proton and an electron. The proton has a positive charge and the electron has a negative charge. Electrons can move to create static electrically charged objects through friction, contact, or induction. Charged objects exert electrostatic forces on each other. Like charges will repel and unlike charges will attract. Either will attract a neutral object. Coulomb's law describes the electrostatic force acting between two point charges. The force is given by the formula force is equal to K Coulomb's constant Q1 Q2 the magnitude of the two charges divided by R squared the distance between the charges. It is proportional to the inverse square of the distance between the charges. Coulomb's constant K depends on the medium that the charges are in. According to the formula K is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon where epsilon is the permittivity of the medium. Finally, Millikan's oil drop experiment determined the magnitude of the elementary charge in a two-stage process. In the first stage, the droplet becomes ionized as it falls with a terminal velocity and the upward forces of drag and buoyancy are balanced by the downward force of gravity. In the second phase, the droplet is held aloft in an electric field created by parallel plates with a potential difference between them. The upward electric force is equal to the downward force of gravity. Through these balanced forces, the charge on the oil droplet can be found, and from there the magnitude of the elementary charge.